So Apple dropped iOS 11 today, and a question that I had in my mind about iOS 11 was how much was it gonna slow down my older iPhone 6 and slightly less old iPhone 6S? To answer that question, I basically ran a bunch of speed tests over the last two days in an attempt to come up with an answer. Now the short answer is that you might notice a small performance decrease on the iPhone 6. You're not gonna notice much of a difference in terms of performance between the iPhone 6S and 7. Overall, my iPhones don't feel slower with iOS 11, but they definitely don't feel faster. Now, if you're still on the fence about upgrading to iOS 11, there's one thing that Apple did with iOS 11 that's gonna make a big difference, which is probably why I personally would say you should go and upgrade to iOS 11 because that, upra that upgrade will give you an extra 10%, 10 to 15% in terms of storage space, which is quite substantial when it comes to these tiny 16 gigabyte iPhone 6s that I have. To elaborate on my answer regarding the performance differences, iOS level tasks like moving photos, videos, and other data around on your iPhone is gonna take about the same amount of time. Apps like Facebook and Instagram in iOS 10 seem to be quicker than they are in iOS 11, which sucks, but games are quicker in iOS 11 by a little bit uh, when compared to iOS 10. So in the next few minutes, I'm gonna elaborate on the test that I did to come to this conclusion, as well as elaborate more on how how much space I've saved on all my iPhones when it came to upgrading from iOS 10 to 11 because of Apple's decision to go with Hevelg and Helia. I, I don't know how to say those codecs properly. Real usage, real reviews. Mobile reviews, a dot ca. At mobile reviews, a dot ca, Monty and I base all our uh, videos on actual usage. So with these speed tests, I basically film myself while duplicating videos, uh, opening up apps multiple times. I made sure that every one of these iPhones were update, was updated to 10.3.3 and when iOS 11 dropped, I went and upgraded them all at the same time. They, every single app has been updated, so you know I tried to make this test as consistent as possible, but surprisingly, a lot of my results were very inconsistent, and well, we'll get to that. The test that I performed included duplicating 25 photos at once, duplicating 11 long minute video, which was about 1.3 gigabytes in size. I recorded how long it took me to load Facebook, Instagram, and Facebook uh, Pages Manager in that order, and I also went and recorded how long it took me to load Hitman Sniper, as well as Clash of of clans. I also wrote down how much space my photos and videos took as well as the amount of free space that I had uh, on each iPhone before and after each upgrade. To come up with the uh, timing I basically just used Final Cut Pro X and this timeline generator. Now with the 25 photo duplication I was surprised that there was a significant difference between the iPhone 6 and the 6s. On the iPhone 6 it only took four seconds to duplicate 25 photos which didn't seem too bad but it only took two and a half seconds on the iPhone 6s and subsequently on the iPhone 7. When it came to video, the differences were slightly larger as it took the old iPhone almost three seconds more to do the same task. Now there was something odd about these duplication tests. Like I fully expected the iPhone 6S to be faster than the iPhone 6, that made sense. I was expecting the 7 to be faster than the 6, but the times between iOS 10 and iOS 11 between these two devices are almost identical. And that's very surprising to me. And I can't, I won't talk about it right now because I've got this flow in the script, but do keep this in mind. I'm pointing this out because I am going to elaborate on this in a few minutes. When it comes to opening up Facebook, Instagram, and Facebook page manager, um, every iOS 11 time was slightly longer than the iOS time, which isn't great. One of the things that really stood out to me on the 6, and it didn't stand out as much uh, on the 6S and 7, was that it took so much longer for me to load the apps the first time I used them. It took me multiple attempts in order to get a consistent time rating with the iPhone 6. Now I'm assuming that with these internet based apps and with iOS being released that app manufacturers are going to improve the speed of their apps. It was surprising to me that these apps would slow down. On average, it took more than 15 seconds for the iPhone 6 to load those three apps, whereas in the iPhone 6S and the iPhone 7 consistently took less than 15 seconds. So um, there is a slight performance hit when it comes to you know, those apps and your iPhone 6, not the 6S and not the 7. Now you might be thinking, this is a deal breaker for me. It's like 20% slower. It kind of is and it kind of isn't. The first thing is that, well, you've, most of you aren't gonna have anything to compare it against, right? So you just accept the fact that that's how long the app takes to load. The other portion is that a lot of these social media apps, uh, they cache a lot of stuff. So I might not have pulled everything I need to cache. And so maybe it was doing some caching in the background with the iPhone 6. I don't know for sure, but from what I've noticed, it's a little slower on the device that's three years old. 
Now, when it comes to loading games like Hitman Sniper and Clash of Clans, the times on iOS 11 were very similar to the times on iOS 10. On the iPhone 6, Hitman Sniper took about the same time to load on both iOSs, but surprisingly on the iPhone 6s, uh, both opened up the games a little quicker. The iPhone 7 was actually the quickest out of the three, which was kind of expected because it's got the newest hardware. So if you're worried about iOS 11 slowing down your games, don't fret because from my very small sample size, I did not notice a difference. Now, similar to the uh, data copying test like the, for the videos and the photos, I was surprised at how much quicker my iPhone 6S opened up Clash of Clans uh, when compared to my iPhone 6. And again, I was surprised at the small difference between the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 6S. These two times were almost identical. 6S was a tad slower than the 7, but still I was expecting something more, like a bigger jump between the really old iPhone and this slightly old iPhone. Those are all the tests that I did, and again, the performance hit is really only gonna affect the iPhone 6 version. You might notice a minute amount on the iPhone 6S, and you're not gonna notice anything on the iPhone 7. Now, the main reason why I say you should upgrade to iOS 11, even if you are running an iPhone 6 or an iPhone 5S, is the fact that iOS 11, or Apple, decided to, go, to use uh, different codecs for video and images. So with videos, it's using now HEVC, I don't know how to say it, and then images, it's H-E-I-C. Um, so H-E-I-C is replacing JPEGs and is replacing your MP4s. And with those updated uh, compression methods, we'll say, you're gonna save a ton of space when it comes to storing photos and videos. And that's gonna be important for lots of us because you're probably like me, I take a good amount of photos and videos. The new compression codec reduced my media on my iPhone 6 from 4.9 gigabytes to 2.8. On my 6S, the size went from 3.76 to 1.5. And, and on my iPhone 7, went from 7.9 to 5.8. On average, I was freeing up two gigabytes of space on my iPhones, which is awesome. Now some of the free space gets taken away by, you know, iOS 11, but I'll take any improvement in free space I can get. Oddly enough though, my iPhone 7 went from having two gigabytes of free space to 5.3, which was much higher than both the iPhone 6 and 6S, and I have no idea why that has happened. But the one thing I will assume is that you will get more free space as app manufacturers update their uh, apps. For example, Hitman Sniper still takes 1.03 gigabytes in iOS 10, and it takes the same amount of space in iOS 11. Now, I know the entire game isn't based on pictures and videos, but those compression uh, methods will improve how apps store the images and stuff. So you're gonna get some image savings across every single app over the next while, is what I'm assuming. The next part elaborates on the oddity between the similar times between the iPhone 6S and iPhone 7 in terms of copying videos and files. Um, I just explained to you guys what, sh what the new compression methods are. So it's a smaller amount of data that needs to be copied. So I logically assume that it would, the iPhone 7 or iOS 11 would copy those files quicker, but they don't. And I have no idea why that is. Shouldn't copying 25 photos of smaller size be quicker? You're basically not copying as much data, but I couldn't I couldn't get it any quicker than however I recorded it. Now I was thinking maybe I had to take new photos instead of just using old ones that iOS 11 had converted. So I went and took 25 new H H E I C images and I thought that might improve the copy speed. No, it didn't. It still took four seconds. So this is getting to the pieces of, you know, software development that I have no idea. And I did do a bit of coding in my younger years. Not that into it. Uh, so if you have an answer for me, leave it in the comment section below because I'd love to know an answer so that I can answer that question in my head. Uh, if this is the first time you're watching my videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe. Uh, lots of content coming out in the next while, torch tests, all those good things with the new iPhone 8s and the iPhone Xs. So do stay tuned. Thanks for watching. You need an eyebrow cut, buddy. An eyebrow cut.